Yes, Mr Hart. Commissioner, the next witness is Ross McNaughton. Mr McNaughton, you come into the witness box. Mr McNaughton, would you prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? Uh, affirmation, Commissioner. Affirm the witness, please. Sure. I solemnly and sincerely... I solemnly and sincerely... Declare and affirm... Declare and affirm... That the evidence I shall give... That the evidence I shall give... Will be the truth... Will be the truth... The whole truth... The whole truth... And nothing but the truth... And nothing but the truth. Do sit down. Yes, Mr Harris. Mr McNaughton, your full name is Ross Hugh McNaughton. That's correct. And your business address is 500 Burke Street, Melbourne. Yes, it is. And the General Manager of Strategic Business Services at the National Australia Bank Limited. I am. And have you received a summons to attend today and give evidence? I have, yes. Uh, I tender that summons. Exhibit 3.139, summons to Mr McNaughton. Um, and in response to the Commission's rubric 3-19, have you made a statement dated 22 May 2018? I have, yes. Do you have a copy of that statement with you in the witness box? Yes, I do. And uh, do you wish to make some corrections to uh, a number of the figures which appear in that statement? Yes, that's correct. And have you uh, made those uh, amendments already in hand on the statement? Yes, I have. Um, Mr McNaughton, I'm going to uh, draw your attention to uh, a number of paragraphs where those corrections appear and uh, as we go through them, would you initial please the places where you have made those handwritten uh, corrections before I tender the statement. The first paragraph is paragraph 93. Do you see... Um, uh, the balance of the trade facility was 707,000 odd and uh, do you wish to change that to a figure of three th $343,812.05? I do, yes. Please initial that. And then the total balance of the facilities which uh, was formerly 3072000 odd, do you wish to change that figure to $2,618,797.62? I do, yes. I do. Could you please initial that? Paragraph 107, the balance of the trade finance facility there appearing as $917,000 odd, do you wish to change that to $963,362.60? Yes, I do. Please initial it. And do you wish to uh, change the balance total from $3.428 million to $3,474,666.10? Yes, I do. Please initial that. Paragraph 138. Again, the trade finance facility, do you wish to correct the uh, limit of that facility changing it from 1.5 million to 1.3 million? Yes, I do. And do you wish to change the balance of that facility from 1.187 uh, million to 1,155,721.58? Yes, I do. Please initial both those changes. Do you wish to change the uh, limit of the overdraft as at 18 February 2015 from 60,000 to 260,000? Yes, I do. Please initial that. And then uh, the balance of all facilities, do you wish to change that from 4 million odd to 3,973,076 dollars and 4 cents? Yes, I do. Please initial that. Paragraph 142. The uh, limit of the trade finance facility, do you wish to correct that from 1.5 million to 1.3 million? Yes, I do. And do you wish to correct the balance from one million odd to one million two hundred ninety nine thousand three hundred ninety one point eight six? Yes, I do. Please initial both those changes. Uh, do you wish to correct the uh, limit of the overdraft from sixty thousand dollars to two hundred sixty thousand dollars? I do. Please initial that. And then the uh, balance of all the facilities from three point six seven million to three million nine hundred nineteen thousand six hundred sixty four dollars and eighteen cents. Yes, I do. Please initial those changes. Paragraph 164. Do you wish to change the limit of the trade finance facility from 1.5 million to 1.3 million? Yes. 
and the balance of that facility from one million odd to one million two hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred and four dollars and forty-seven cents. Yes, I do. Please initial those changes. Uh, do you wish to change the overdraft limit from sixty thousand to two hundred sixty thousand? Yes, I do. Please change. Uh, please initial that change. And do you wish to change the total balance of the facilities from 3.59 million odd to 3 million 829,576 dollars and 68 cents? Yes, I do. Could you please initial those changes? Uh, paragraph 209. Do you wish to change the balance of the trade finance facility from uh, 666 uh, 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 Thousand odd to five hundred sixty-three five uh, five hundred sixty-three thousand five hundred sixty dollars and twenty-one cents. Yes, I do. Could you please initial that? And as to the balance of the facilities, do you wish to change that from two million odd to one million nine hundred twelve thousand five hundred three dollars and ninety-four cents? Yes, I do. Please initial that change. And then finally, paragraph two hundred twelve. Do you wish to change the balance of the trade finance facility to $645,105.24? Yes, I do. Please initial that. And do you wish to change the uh, total balance to $1,956,325.61? Yes, I do. Please initial that. I tender the statement, Commissioner. Exhibit 3.140, mm. statement of Mr McNaughton as amended. No further questions. I, I, I With its accompanying exhibits. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes. Yes, Mr Hyde. Thank you, Commissioner. Sorry, I'll just give you a moment, Mr McNaughton. No, you're right? Yes. Thank you. Mr McNaughton, you're the general manager, general manager of the Strategic Business Services Division in Australia of the NAB? Yes, that's correct. And you've held that position since May of 2017? Yes, that's right. And the Strategic Business Services Division is sometimes abbreviated, I assume often abbreviated as SBS. Yes, it does. And the SBS division deals with what you refer to as stressed or defaulted loans, is that right? Yes, that's right. And that may not necessarily mean that the customer is in default. It may simply be that there are warning signs that suggest the customer is under financial stress. Yes, that's correct. And before you took up your position as general manager of SBS, you had you were already working for NAB in the UK, is that right? Yes, that's right. And before you were working for NAB in the UK, you'd been a banker since 1988, is that's that right? That's right, yes. All right. And you, having only come into your position in May, current position in May of 2017, you weren't involved directly in Mr Dillon's file or National Music's file? No, I wasn't. And You've been presented as the witness by NAB, though, to respond to Mr Dillon's evidence? Yes, that's correct. And in the course of preparing to give evidence, you've reviewed Mr Dillon and National Music's file? Yes, I have. And does that extend only to the documents within the SBS file, or is that all documents across the, that are held by NAB, or are they the same thing? Uh, I have seen additional documents beyond those that would normally be held by SBS. All right. And have you exhibited all of the relevant documents to your statement? Yes, I have. All right. Now, I want to start by understanding your view about the securities. Is it your understanding that Goanna Downs secured the borrowings of national music? Via supporting the guarantee that Mr Dillon had given, yes. Now that now, we need to be very clear about this, don't we, Mr McNaughton, as I think you know. There is a difference between a, between a mortgage securing a guarantee and a mortgage securing the borrowings of a third party. It didn't directly support, didn't directly secure the debts of national music. And when did you realise that, Mr McNaughton? Um, during the, the process um, of reviewing my... Uh, um, the, the documents here in preparing my statement. In the course of preparing your statement, you came to understand that, in fact, there wasn't a security that the NAB held over Goanna Downs in respect of national music's borrowings. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. You came to understand 
that the only security that NAB held over Goanna Downs was to support liabilities of Mr Dillon and his wife personally, is that right? Yes, that's correct. And the guarantee could conceivably give rise to one of those personal liabilities? Yes. But in this case, that is at the time in 2015, there was no personal liability under the guarantee, was there? That's correct. So in fact, is it fair to say you now understand that NAB had no lawful entitlement to insist on the full proceeds of Goanna Downs being used to pay down the debts of national music? That's correct. And you discovered that in the course of preparing to give evidence? Uh, yes, I did, because I didn't have awareness of this prior to it. When you initially started preparing to give evidence, you thought that there was a lawful entitlement on the part of NAB to use the full sale proceeds from Goanna Downs to pay down the debts of national music? No, only in default. Sorry, you only. thought only in default? Yes. Now, I just, I need to understand that. You know that in this case, a draft of your statement was provided yes. by the NAB to the Royal Commission? Yes, I'm aware of that. And I want to understand, did you initially believe that NAB had a right to apply the proceeds of sale from Goanna Downs to National Music's facilities because of the personal guarantee and indemnity provided by Mr and Mrs Dillon? Yes, that's correct. I did initially believe that. All right, so the answer that you gave a moment ago, which was that I understood to be that you had never thought that National, when, from the moment you started preparing, you had never understood that NAB had a lawful entitlement to insist on all of the proceeds being used. That answer was incorrect. Yes, I, sorry, yes. That's... Initially, when you started preparing, you understood that by virtue of the guarantees, NAB had a lawful entitlement to insist on all of the proceeds being used to pay down National Music's debts. Yes. And then at some point, somebody explained to you that that's not how the guarantees and indemnities worked. Correct. And then you then subsequently changed or approved a change to your draft statement in order to no longer make that claim? Yes. And where, when you changed your statement, did you identify that you now understood that NAB did not have a lawful entitlement to pay down the national music facilities from the proceeds of Goanna Downs? When I reviewed the, the guarantee. No, no, no. Sorry. Where in your statement yes. do you explain your new understanding? Um, I, I corrected the statement. You corrected the statement yes. to no longer positively assert. Yeah, but I haven't, I didn't then explain. Let me, just let me finish my question. You corrected your statement to no longer positively assert that National Music had a lawful entitlement pursuant to the, I'm sorry, that NAB had a lawful entitlement pursuant to the guarantees and indemnities to require all of the proceeds of sale to be used to discharge NAB's debts owed by National Music? You, you removed that positive assertion? Yes. But you didn't explain that you now understood that in fact NAB didn't have a lawful entitlement to require the, the balance proceeds to be used to discharge Matt National no, Music's debts. And why was that? Um, I, I didn't. I uh, feel that I had to because I'd corrected my statement. Let me take you to some paragraphs of your statement. Can we bring up paragraph 65 of Mr Dillon's statement? This is... Dillon's statement or...? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr McNaughton's statement. It's wit.0001.0046.0001. You see in paragraph 65 of your statement, you still say, the rural property known as Goanna Downs was a specialised broodmare property provided by Mr Dillon and his wife as security for a number of facilities held in their own names and by National Music? Yes, I do. Do you agree that that statement is incorrect? 
yes, it wasn't, it's not direct security or wasn't direct security for the national music facilities. Yes, it's not security for the facilities of national music. Not direct security, no. Not what, sorry? Direct. It's security for any obligations of Mr. Mr. Dillon, Dillon and yes. Mrs. Dillon, and they had given guarantees and indemnities. Yes. All right. And then you see in paragraph 74, which is over the page, this paragraph, I gather you would say that is partially correct? That is, the first sentence is correct in that the guarantee is a security for the facilities? Yes. But insofar as the second sentence appears to suggest that Goanna Downs secured repayment of the sum of $2,085,000 and any additional amount as defined incurred by National Music, that's not correct? Yes, that's correct. It's, it's, it wasn't that security for what? National Music. What the guarantees and indemnities did was in the event of default by National Music, they then created a liability on the part of Mr and Mrs Dillon. Is that right? Yes. And Mr and Mrs Dillon had offered up Goanna Downs as securities for their liabilities. Correct. And so that paragraph, should we take it or should the Commissioner take it, that what that is meant to mean is that under the guarantees and liabilities, I'm sorry, under the guarantees and indemnities, if there was a default and it was necessary for National Music to repay $2.085 million, then in that case there would be a liability of, the, of Mr and Mrs Dillon and they had offered security for that liability. Yes. And then Can we then go to paragraph 134 of Mr McNaughton's statement? That is on page 33. Can we bring up the, it carries over the page, it has a number of sub-paragraphs, so perhaps we can pop it all out. It may not be possible to pop it out. That's all right. What you relate in paragraph 134 is that on the 3rd of May 2018, you had a discussion with Mr Bassett. Yes, that's correct. And that was in preparation for giving evidence? Yes, it was. And if we blow up subparagraph B, what Mr Bassett said at that time was the way in which proceeds of sale are to be applied following the sale of a security asset by a business customer requires credit approval? Yes. While, and he also said to you, while employed at NAB, credit approval was usually assessed and given by Mr Bassett's credit executive, who was a DCA holder? Yes. Now, just taking that first proposition, in this case, in the case of Goanna Downs, that's incorrect, isn't it? The proceeds of sale, once the personal mortgage of Mr and Mrs Dillon were discharged, didn't require credit approval? Uh, no, it would have done. It would have required yeah. credit approval. Why is that? Because the property was held in support of Mr and Mrs Dillon's obligations. No, I just want to understand that. Does that mean that your understanding is that the mortgage over Goanna Downs secured any obligations of Mr and Mrs Dillon? That's the first proposition. Uh, they had acknowledged that it would support the it was held in support of the personal obligations, but then also in support of the guarantee. But there were no obliga there were no obligations under I'm sorry, there were no debts or liabilities under the guarantee at that time? 
uh, when the property was sold? There was no, there was no uh, default. So there were no liabilities or debts owed by Mr and Mrs Dillon under the guarantee at the time that Goanna Downs was sold? But the property was held in support of the guarantee, so release of the property um, would have required some form of um, replacement security because the facilities of National Music had been provided on the basis that a guarantee had been provided by Mr and Mrs Dillon and the Goanna Downs property um, was was uh, held as part of those um, obligations. Now, I think, you tell me if I'm wrong, I think you're making a different point from the one that's being made at 134B. The point that you are making is that because the mortgage secured the guarantee and indemnity, therefore it was a matter for NAB whether or not it released the mortgage given that it secured the guarantee and indemnity. That's your point? Yes. That's a different point, isn't it, from whether or not the proceeds of sale, that is the balance proceeds of sale, are something that requires credit approval? Or do you see them as the same thing? I see it as the same thing. That is, because NAB had the mortgage to support the guarantee and indemnity, it might therefore simply say, we refuse to release the mortgage unless you do what we want with the proceeds of sale. Um, it would certainly be looking for um, some form of replacement security if, that, if the security had been held and had been a consideration for providing facilities to National Music. All right. When you spoke to Mr Bassett, did you discuss with him whether he understood that... NAB didn't have a lawful entitlement to insist on all of the monies coming to it? No, I didn't. And why was that? Um, because I, I didn't see the need to discuss that with them. You understand from your review of the documents that the way in which NAB dealt with Mr Dillon was to represent that NAB required all of the monies to come to it? Uh, well, from, from what I read, um, it was a voluntary sale and as a result of the, the voluntary sale, um, I would have expected a proposal to have been made by Mr Dillon as to um, how that security would be replaced. You haven't answered my question, I'll ask it again. You understood from the documents that you have read that NAB represented to Mr Dillon that it required that all of the monies from the sale be paid to it? That was the proposal that the NAB made to Mr Dillon. No, no, I, please I look listen. On it as a, I don't look on it as um, it was a requirement. I look on it as a, it was the proposal that NAB made. All right. Do you regard it as relevant to the making of that proposal that NAB did not have a lawful entitlement to insist on all of the monies being used to pay down the debts of NAB. Um, sorry, can you ask me a question again? Sorry. You regard it as relevant to the making of what you term a proposal by NAB that NAB did not have a lawful entitlement to require all of those monies to be used to pay down the debts of NAB? Um, no, I don't. Irrelevant from your perspective? Yes. You don't think it's necessary for NAB to articulate to the borrower what securities and rights it has under those securities? Uh, I, yeah, I, I think Mr Dillon was aware of that, that, he, that Goanna Downs supported the guarantee and held in security of the, the obligations, his obligations to national music. Well, as, did you listen to Mr Dillon's evidence? No, I haven't. I see. Take it from me, because your senior counsel was very careful to have Mr Dillon agree with this. Mr Dillon understood, believed apparently, that the facilities of national music were secured by Go Out of Downs. Okay. If that was his understanding, that was incorrect, you agree? Mr. I, I object to that. I, I put to Mr Dillon what appeared in Mr Dillon's statement. And I didn't make a distinction, I accept I didn't make a distinction between direct or indirect security, but I put to Mr Dillon 
what Mr. Dillon had said. Mr. Hodge. Yes, I, let me rephrase the question. If Mr. Dillon understood that Goanna Downs secured the debts or the facilities of National Music with NAB, that understanding was incorrect? Um, if that's what you assumed, yes. Now, I want to then ask you some questions about the course of communications between Mr Dillon and NAB. You've exhibited a document which is a 2010 credit submission. I'll bring it up. Please. Can we bring up NAB dot triple zero I'm sorry, double zero five dot three four two dot zero zero two one. This is a document exhibited to your statement, Mr. Yes. McNaughton. You've seen it before and reviewed I it. Have, yes. Can we go to page dot zero zero two four? You see the internal note is our security property known as Goanna Downs is on the market for sale by expressions of interest. And you can read the remainder of what's in that paragraph. And I want to particularly draw your attention to the sentence, principals will retain about $800,000 to $1 million to purchase another and PPR as principal place of residence. Is that right? Yes, that's right. With the balance of settlement funds to be applied to debt reduction? Yes. And this will see the PPCK. That's effectively the personal security facility. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Cleared in full and a significant reduction in the trade refinance facility? Yes. Do you accept that in 2010, and this is early 2010, April 2010, that Mr Dillon had communicated to your bank an intention that upon the sale of the property, he would use 800000 to a $1 million to purchase another place of residence? Yes, that's, that's what it says. And so that I understand your view as to how National Bank should communicate with its customers, what would you have expected the response of a banker to be to that statement? Um, I think it, uh, it depends whether, you know, how serious that interest is and how serious the intent of um, Mr. Dillon, in this case, was to actually follow that through, but there's, um, I would I would have expected the banker to um, have at least acknowledged it in some way. I and wouldn't I wouldn't have expected them to do much beyond um, trying to find out what his intentions were. And then, can we bring up? NAB.005.342.0128.
Now, as I understand it, you haven't exhibited this document to your witness statement, is that right, Mr McNaughton? Uh, sorry, but I haven't. You haven't? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't recognise that document. All right. Have you looked at it in the course of preparing to give evidence today? Uh, no, I haven't. All right. You see, this is the same type of document as the one yes. we just looked at. You agree? Yes. And you see the date of this submission is the 25th of March 2013? Yes. And you see it's in relation to national music. We see aggregation group? Yes. And then... If we go to page dot zero one three see this sets out national music and then Mr Dillon as the customer? Yes. And you see, if you look over on the right hand column under bankers comments, waiver of revaluation of the Scone property is sought on the following basis and then there's a series of dashes. Yes. And you see from the sale proceeds, the client will look to pay out the portfolio facility P4.1, now just pausing on that, P4.1, that's the personal facility of it is, yes. Mr. Dillon, is that right? Yes. And lease P5.1, do you know what the lease is? Uh, I understand it was for um, some motor vehicles. And it was, and we may as well just confirm this, we go back to page dot zero one three zero. And you see at the bottom of the page, there's borrower, and it's the Dillons trading as Goanna Downs, and there's a lease there. Yes. Of approximately $42,000 is the limit. Yes. All right, so then if we go back to page .0133, So what's being proposed in 2013 is that the client, who's Mr Dillon, will look to pay out the portfolio facility, which is the $1.15 million personal facility. You agree with that? Yes. And the lease, which is the approximately $42,000 lease facility? Yes. Owed by them personally? That is by the Dillons personally? It's uh, a personal loan to the Dillons? Yes, sorry, yes. Then $200,000 will be put back into the business. Yes. And the balance of funds to go towards purchasing another property with a small mortgage. Yes. And just to tie this off, we see in the dash preceding the point, client has placed the property back on the market with a revised sale range of 2.2 to $2.3 million. Yes. Now, as we understand it, this is consistent with the proposal that Mr Dillon says he was also talking about in 2015. Do you regard it as consistent? Uh, yes, I do. And then it says, note, no commitment given refunding. Yes, I see that. But that seems to be no commitment given refunding re in relation to the small mortgage that's being referred to. Do you agree? Uh, I don't know that, sorry. You don't know? No. You haven't looked at this document before? Sorry, I don't. No one gave it to you in the course of preparing no, for this. And then, 
if we then go... Are you putting that in evidence? Oh, I'm sorry, I tend to that document. Hodge business memorandum of increase 25 March 13, NAB 00534201128, exhibit 3.141. Thank you, Commissioner. And can we then bring up tab 105 of Mr McNaughton's statement? This is NAB.134.007.9166. You see, this is a chain of emails. You've obviously looked at it before between Mr. Bassett and Ms. Moynihan. Yes, I have. And you see in the email from Ms. Moynihan to Mr. Bassett on the 30th of April 2015, in the second paragraph, the second sentence is, we should pay down our facilities from the sale of Goanna Downs and therefore will require all net funds to NAB. Yes, I see that. And I want to then, I'll take you through a few documents so that you can see them and then I want to ask you some questions. And then we go to NAB dot one three four dot zero zero six dot four nine six one which is tab one oh six And this is an email that we've looked at already in the course of the evidence, though you may not have looked at, which is an email from Mr. Dillon to Mr. Bassett on the 30th of April 2015. Yes. And you see in the fourth paragraph of his email, he says, our intentions have always been to do the right thing by clearing the mortgage, clearing the redraw facility, inject the requested $200,000 into national music and we will clear the lease on the Ranger and probably sell the Mazda Ranger and clear the lease on that as well. All this reduces the bank's exposure by over 1.4 million. I would have thought a good outcome for NAB. Yes, I see that. And you understand the property had sold for about $2.22 million. Yes. And there'd been about $100,000 in sale costs. Yes. And so roughly then this is leaving Mr. Dillon with approximately $700,000 if he's providing $1.4 million to pay down the exposure of NAB? Yes, it would have been. And it would seem, and I'm interested in understanding your view about this, that this is again consistent with the position that Mr. Dillon had expressed in 2010 and in 2013 and now seemingly in 2015, that he was going to retain a proportion of the funds from the sale of the property. Do you agree with that? Yes, I agree that um, it's consistent that he was going to retain a portion of funds, albeit the the, the purchase or the, the, the sales price or intended sales price and circumstances um, looked different. Yes, in 2010, it looked like it might be $3 million by 2013, it looked like it might be $2.2 million or $2.3 million. It turned out to be $2.22 million. Yes. And what I want to understand from your perspective is what you would regard as the right approach to communicating to the customer in these circumstances where the customer is selling a property and expresses an intention as to how it is that he is going to use the funds before and during the sale process. Do you have a view about that? Yeah, I think it's difficult um, where properties held um, as direct security and then also as support for other obligations. I think it's difficult um, for the bank in, in this instance to continually communicate what um, we expect from 
from the customer should they sell the property. We'd seen in this case a number of instances where Mr Dillon intended to sell the property um, and I think it would be difficult to proactively communicate what we um, expected in a proposal from Mr Dillon. I just want to understand that because, as you know, Mr Bassett's evidence, which is given both in his statutory declaration and also which he discussed with you in his telephone conversation with you, was that when Mr Dillon said whatever it is that he said about what he wanted to do with the money, that he wouldn't have said anything in response to that because he couldn't do it without credit approval. That, that's your understanding yes. of what Mr Bassett says. And do you regard that as an appropriate response from a banker of NAB to a customer in those circumstances? I, I do to the extent of not giving any commitment. Well, ought the banker say anything about that might not happen, we might insist on all of it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have expected um, a banker in those circumstances to make um, a commitment or a statement to that effect. You would expect the banker to just stay silent? No, I would have expected them to be inquisitive as to what, what the motives behind the sale were and, and what the customer um, thought would or expected to happen. Would you expect the banker to communicate that what was done with the proceeds would depend entirely on the agreement of the National Australia Bank? Uh, I think that would have been. Um, I think that had been certainly uh, an acceptable thing for a banker to have done. Um, would be to to remind the customer of their their obligations and what what we regarded the property as security or support for. Would you have expected the banker to say? what you're proposing may not be something that NAB will agree to? Um, I, I think that, that could happen, um, but it would depend on the individual circumstances. You understand and you can see what happens in this case, which is that when it is then revealed that NAB has a different position, that <coughs> takes the customer by surprise. Uh, yeah, I... I realised from reviewing the evidence that it um, that Mr Dillon said he was surprised and shocked by it. But it's obvious, isn't it, that if a customer, forget about Mr Dillon, if any customer says to a banker, I'm going to sell my property and I'm going to use the proceeds in this way, if the banker then says three months later, we're not going to let you do it that way, we're going to do it some other way, that that's going to come as a surprise to the customer. But in this, but in generally, if the property is held in support of obligations, then I would have expected in the customer to make an alternative proposal as to how that uh, security or support for obligations would be replaced. I'm not sure you're answering my question. It's obvious, isn't it, that if a borrower says to a banker at a point in time, I intend to use the proceeds from the sale of my property in this way, and the banker apparently says nothing, and then a month or two months or three months later says, the proceeds are going to be used in a different way, that that is going to take the borrower by surprise. Yes, that would be right. And it's bad communication, isn't it? Yeah, I think the communication, in, in, in those circumstances, that communication could be better. And do you accept that the communication in this case was poor? Uh, I think the communication could have been better here, yes. Do you accept that it was poor? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it was poor. Right. You don't think there was anything unfair about the communication that was used? Uh, no, I, I, I'm sorry I don't. I'm sorry to, to, to rise at this point. In my submission, the questions that have been posed by my learned friend assume a state of affairs which is uh, not necessarily accepted by NAB, namely that Mr Dillon told Mr Bassett at the meeting of the 2nd of March what he proposed to do with the money. I'm perfectly happy for the question to be asked if it's put on that basis. That is, if it be accepted that Mr Dillon did, did do that, what do you say? Mr Hodge, what do you I say? Pro I propose to deal with it in a slightly different way, yeah. Commissioner. 
Can we bring up document 107, which is NAB.134.007.9172? Oh, I'm sorry, actually, I, before we do that, let's just stay on this document. I need to point out one other thing to you, Mr McNaughton. You see that Mr Dillon says at the start of the email, I would like to know why these things are being requested by yourself. Is this normal? I'm sorry, but I am very suspicious of NAB and its motives ever since I felt we were badly treated a few years ago. Yes. All right. And so then, having noted that, can we now go to NAB.134.007.9172? And you see Mr Bassett's email to Ms Moynihan says, I will not respond to the email below until you direct me. However, given the nature of email, it is clear we will have to respond shortly to Ross so that they are clear what we are proposing. Yes. All right. And then if we then go to 108, which is NAB.134.007.9183. And Ms Moynihan responds and says, Hi, Sean, it would be good to understand what arrangements were discussed with the customer regarding the sale of the property, what expectations were communicated to the customer regarding the utilisation of the proceeds of sale, were the customers aware of the facilities secured against the property? Yes. Now, pausing on that for a moment, it appears that Ms Moynihan had also misunderstood the nature of the security interests that NAB had with respect to the Goanna Downs property, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know that, sorry. Have you looked into it? Uh, I didn't specifically ask. You spoke Ms. to Ms Moynihan? I did, yes. Did you ask her what her understanding was of the security interests that NAB had over the property? No, I didn't. And then if we go to 109, which is NAB.134.007.9186, You see Mr Bassett's reply on the 1st of May is, hello Margaret, I certainly have never communicated what banks' expectations would be upon sale of Goanna Downs. Ross has told us before that upon sale of the property he intended on putting $200,000 in funds into national music, but at that time we did not talk about debt reduction. Not at any stage have I discussed what the bank will require as debt reduction and what facilities the property secures. Yes, I see that. Now having look through these emails to see what NAB has recorded internally as to what was discussed with Mr Dillon. I'm going to suggest to you that we can take it from these emails, and this is the only information you have to go on, that what had been communicated by Mr Dillon to Mr Bassett was that he was only expecting to put $200,000 into national music. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes and that there hadn't been a discussion between Mr Bassett and Mr Dillon about debt reduction? It doesn't look as though there was. And Mr Bassett's position is that he's never actually discussed with Mr Dillon what the bank will require as debt reduction and what facilities the property secures. Yes, that's correct. Taking those things, assume that those are the case. Is it your view that nevertheless the communications between Mr Dillon and Mr Bassett were okay? Uh, yes, I think they were. All right, you don't see or identify any problem in Mr Dillon having expressed an intention as to what is to happen with the proceeds of sale and Mr Bassett not discussing with him that the bank may want to use it for debt reduction, that the bank may insist that the monies be used for debt reduction. No, and I, and I think um, there were a number, over the years, as, as you've pointed out, there were a number of proposals from Mr Dillon, um, some of which talked about alternative properties, um, presumably with replacement security. So, I, no, I, I don't think the, uh, the communications were poor. All right. Can we bring up... NAB.141.001.5774.
I want to just complete the chain of what happens internally. I don't think you've exhibited this document to your statement, Mr. McNaughton. Uh, no, I haven't. All right. This is, although at the top it looks like it's an email addressed to Mr. Dillon and the other people who work in the national music business, it's actually the draft email that Ms. Moynihan is sending to Mr. Bassett. Is that right? Or you just haven't oh. looked at this document at all? Yeah, I saw it yesterday. All right. Commissioner, I won't worry about the doc that document and I won't worry about tendering it yes. either. Can we go then to document 110 of the exhibits to the statement? Now, this is an email sent by Ms Moynihan I'm sorry, it's nab.134.009.2614. Oh, I'm sorry, that is, that's the right email. I apologise, Mr McNaughton. This is an email that's sent, to Ms. Moyn sent by Ms Moynihan to, this time, to Mr Dillon and to his business associates. Yes. And it's sent on the 5th of May 2015 and referring to a discussion or a meeting that has occurred between Mr Bassett, Ms Moynihan and Mr Dillon and his business associates? Yes. And is it your understanding that at that meeting what was communicated by Ms Moynihan was that NAB required all of the proceeds of sale to be used to pay down its debt? Absent any other proposal, yes. Unless they made some other proposal, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I quite understand that. You're saying that what you think Ms Moynihan communicated was that absent some other proposal, all of the proceeds would be required to pay down the debt? Yes. All right. And why do you believe there's the condition of absent some other proposal? Well, I, the... The property secured the obligations of Mr. And Mrs. Dillon for national music, um, and absent that, um, then I would have uh, I would have expected um, Ms. Moynihan to have sought replacement security, or um, for the, in order for the bank to release the charge over the property, um, then the full proceeds would have been uh, would have been used to to pay down the debt. You see at the bottom of the page, it said, Ross has indicated that he is willing to provide the following to NAB from the net settlement funds of $2.12 million. I do, yes. And I'm just trying to understand your, when you've gone back and looked at the documents, what you've inferred from this. Is it that Ms Moynihan has gone in and said we require all of it and that the counter-proposal from Mr Dillon is I'll give you almost all of it. Yes. All right. And then can we go to tab 112, which is nab.134.006.4919? And this is an email where Mr Dillon says to Ms Moynihan, I'm sorry if I seemed a little aggressive yesterday, but in my defence I was very much taken by surprise by the whole turn of events. Up until Friday morning I'd been led to believe all was on track and the injection of $200,000 would fix any issues the bank had. Yes, I see that. And again, that's consistent with what Mr Bassett has noted as to what he has been told. That is that... Mr. Dillon is anticipating he'll just have to put $200,000 into national music. Yes. And you'll note his observation that he was surprised by that turn of events. Yes. Does that trouble you 
when you go back and look at the file that Mr. Dillon, your customer, would be surprised to discover that he was going to have to put all of the money in? Yeah, I, I think um, it, it's certainly not ideal that Mr. Mr. Dillon was taken by surprise and shocked at that. And then if we go to tab 114. This is an email back from Ms. Moynihan to Mr. Dillon on the 5th of May, 2015. Yes. And you see about two thirds of the way through the large paragraph, you advise there will be $2.122 million available from the sale and the NAB expects to collect all of these funds to reduce the secured facilities? Yes, I do. All right. And anywhere in these documents or emails or communications that you've reviewed, do we see an explanation from Ms Moynihan to Mr Dillon that the facilities of National Music are not secured by Goanna Downs? Uh, no, I don't. And in fact, we see the opposite, don't we? If you look further on this email, the NAB facilities secured by Goanna Downs are as follows. Yes, I see that. Do you regard it as problematic that that representation was made by Ms Moynihan to Mr Dillon? Uh, I think the communication isn't clear um, and I think what Ms Moynihan was relaying there was practically what would occur um, absent any other proposal from Mr Dillon. I'm sorry, can you say that again? You think she was relaying I think what she was, by this? Yeah, I think what she was saying was practically what would occur for the bank to release its charge absent any other proposal from Mr Dillon, given that Guana Downs supported the obligations of the Dillons towards national music. And I want to understand this position that is mm. the position you're now adopting. And that is, NAB, let's work this through, NAB held a mortgage over Guana Downs that secured the personal liabilities of Mr Dillon and Mrs Dillon, yes? yes. The only liability that existed as at the state or as at the time when the property was sold was the personal liabilities that they had. That was the only thing that could pay, be paid out from the proceeds. Is that right? Yes. But nevertheless, the mortgage also secured the liability that they had, the contingent liability under the guarantee in the event that the guarantee was called on in the future. Yes, and that's the basis on which the funding had been partly made available to National Music. And so what, I understand, and so what might occur is that NAB might say, we're not prepared to release our mortgage because we need some other security for the guarantee and indemnity. Uh, if there had been no proposal um, to have offered alternative security to, in support of the National Music facilities. And... Do you think that that is something that ought to have been communicated to Mr Dillon at some earlier point in time than now? Well, in fact, never. It was never communicated to him. Do you think that it ought to have been communicated to him? Um, it was Mr Dillon that um, had initiated the sale and even going back to 2010 had said his intention was to pay down debt. So I, I, think, um, I think the communication during that had, um, had been what I would probably expect. And could, Mr, uh, could the NAB have precluded Mr Dillon from selling the property? Under the terms of its guarantee and indemnity? Uh, no, it couldn't have. <coughs> Can we bring up NAB.141.001.5898? This is an email that 
doesn't seem to be exhibited to your statement. Have you seen it before, Mr McNaughton? Um, I saw it yesterday. You saw it yesterday? Yes. All right. And you see it's an internal email from Ms Moynihan to Mr Bassett? Yes. And Ms Moynihan is saying to Mr Bassett, I've spoken with Ross regarding the interpretation and his understanding of the email. After discussion, he accepts that the repayment of facilities is what is required? Yes. And again, can I suggest we don't see anything in this email that communicates the apparently more nuanced position that you now suggest the bank takes, which is that it could somehow refuse to release its mortgage unless Mr Dillon did what it wanted him to do? Uh, sorry, can you... Let me put it a different way. What is clear, can I suggest, from this email is that what Ms Moynihan communicated to Mr Bassett was that all of the, all of the proceeds of sale were required to be applied to discharge the facilities of National Music. Absent any other proposal. <coughs> no, no, it doesn't say that, does it? No, it, it doesn't. It says, after discussion, he accepts that the repayment of facilities is what is required. Yes. That was what was communicated. Yes. There's no evidence of any written communication of this idea of there might be some other proposal that you could make to us that you've seen? No, I haven't. All right. And do you accept that this statement carries with it the idea that it was a legal requirement that the proceeds of sale be used to discharge the facilities that NAB had in respect of national music? Uh, no, sorry, I don't know that. No, no. When you look at this statement, okay. you don't accept it or you just don't know whether it carries with it that I don't know whether it, it carries that intent. All right, I tend to that document, Commissioner. Uh, email minor and Bass at 5 May 15, exhibit uh, NAB 14100158988 is exhibit 3.142. All right, now, I want to ask you, Mr. Mr. McNaughton, about the SBS governing principles. Sure. Can we bring that up, which is exhibit 19, nab.005.223.0960? Now, this is a document dated August 2017? Yes. And was there something like this, as far as you know, that existed before August <coughs> 2017? Yes, there was. All right. Was it in similar terms? It was, yes. All right. Did it exist as at 2015? And I understand it was in October of uh, 2015. Do these principles though nevertheless reflect how NAB would expect the SBS to conduct itself? Yes. Now, what I want to particularly ask you about or point out to you is, you see in Be Bold, we won't avoid difficult conversations with our customers and will clearly articulate the bank's position and the basis of our decisions? Yes, I do. Is it your view that just taking the documents that you've, exist, you've exhibited and the statements they make as to what occurred, that the way in which NAB behaved was to clearly articulate the bank's position and the basis of its decisions? Um, I think it could have been clearer. Do you think it's something that ought to have been done earlier? Um. And it was? I think it would have been difficult to have occurred um, prior to the, the sale of, uh, of Goanna Downs. I'm sorry, I don't quite understand that. Why is that? Because we weren't, um, I don't think from what I've read that we were aware that the property was still being actively marketed. 
I'm not really sure I understand that. Yeah. You, you're saying you don't think that you understood that the property was still for sale. Is that the point? Yes, the, the, the property, um, I'm not sure that from what I've read that we were aware the property was still being exposed from sale directly from 2010 all the way through to 2015. So I'm not sure how we could have had the conversation earlier. Well, we know that in 2010 there was a discussion about the property being for sale. Yes. We know that in 2013 there was a discussion about the property being for sale. I've seen that now, yes. We know that in 2015 Mr Bassett went and spoke to Mr Dillon to discuss the fact that the property was for sale. Yes. So I'm just trying to understand the point that you're making. Why was it not possible to communicate earlier what the bank's intentions were? Because I don't think the bank was involved in the, in the sales process. And then you see under respect for people, we always act with integrity and treat our customers and staff with dignity, respect and courtesy? Yes. Do you regard the treatment of Mr Dillon in this case as acting with integrity? Uh, yes, I do. Do you regard the treatment of Mr Dillon as being done with respect and courtesy? Yes, I do. And it, the fact that it wasn't communicated at an earlier time doesn't change that? No, it doesn't. Do you regard the fact that you didn't explain in your statement that you had identified that the facilities of National Music were not secured directly by Goanna Downs as acting with integrity? Yes, I do. And again, to just return to that, do you accept that it's a matter of some significance in considering this case that National Bank, that the National Australia Bank did not have its National Music facilities directly secured by Goanna Downs? Sorry, can you say that again? Do you accept that in considering what occurred and the communications that occurred between yeah. National NAB and Mr Dillon, that a matter of significance in assessing those communications is that NAB did not have securities over Goanna Downs that directly secured the borrowings of National Music? No, I don't. You don't think that was of significance? No. All right. And I should just make sure your view is the way in which National Australia Bank communicated with Mr Dillon was honest, is that right? Yes. And that it was done in good faith? Yes. All right. I don't have any further questions for this witness. Mr Hodge. Yes, Ms Harris. Uh, just one question. Mr... I'm sorry. I... You asked us now by Mr Hodge, uh, do you accept that in considering what occurred in the communications between NAB and Mr Dillon that a matter of significance in assessing those communications is that NAB did not have securities over Goanna Downs that directly secured the borrowings of national music? You don't think that it was of significance and you said no. Could you explain to the Commissioner why that is, please? I'm sorry. I... <laughs> let's, let's take it step by yeah, step. Thanks. You, you were asked some questions uh, about uh, direct and indirect security. Yes. And this was a theme that Mr Hodge developed with you during the course of his questions. And then in the question that I've just read to you, he asked you why you didn't think that that distinction between direct and indirect was a matter of significance in assessing the communications, the satisfactory yeah. nature or otherwise of the communications between NAB and its customer in this case. You said no. Can you explain sure. to the Commissioner why? Um, I, I think from, from what I've read that the, the customer um, understood that 
facilities of national music had been made available because of the, the guarantee supported by the charge over the property. So therefore, I didn't think that um, making that distinction in conversations would be relevant or required. Excuse me, Commissioner. And you were asked a question by Mr Hodge about paragraph 134B. Of your statement, do you have that there? Yes, I do. And uh, that says that refers to the fact that Mr Bassett's view was the way in which the proceeds of sale are to be applied following the sale of a security asset by a business customer requires credit approval. And you were asked by Mr Hodge whether uh, you agreed with that statement and you said yes and you were asked by Mr Hodge um, in effect whether it made a difference that that sec security asset was held as a direct or indirect yes. security and you said no. Why was that? Um, because I, I think uh, that again the, the distinction um, in this case for the customer was they knew the facilities of national music had been made available because of the guarantee and also the security that was held in support of the guarantee um, and that without ha without the reference back to the, the credit authority um, then the the, uh, the the risk profile of national music facilities would materially change. Thank you. No further Just questions. Before you sit down, do you accept that this was not a sale of a security by a business customer? Uh, yes, I do, Commissioner. Yes. Ms. Harris, anything arising out of that? No, Commissioner. No. Thank you very much. Nothing further, Commissioner. Could the witness yes. be excused? Yes, thank you very much. You may step down. You're excused. Further attendance? Yes, Mr. Hodge. Commissioner, I'd propose that we adjourn at this point, but for the hour lunch, so that we come back at 1:45 to then start the next witness, if that's convenient yes. to you. Where do we? Where are we, uh, we'll do that, but where are we going from here? So the next witness is Ms. Bly from the ABA, yes. and then there'll be a few other witnesses after her this afternoon. Yes. So if we adjourn now until 1:45. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner.